stand or sit or, or kneel because it was, they thought they were gonna do something wrong. And my axiom to them was, when in doubt, don't sit. So we have a whole new format now, a whole new way of doing a service. So I'm gonna say, when in doubt, don't unmute. Stay muted on your devices. But there will be two or three places where we can be unmuted and we can talk to each other especially at the end of the service, uh, because we will have an opportunity for announcements and just greet each other and also join the peace. So with that said, let us now begin our service with Collins' prelude with Ralph Vaughn Williams. So Susan, if you can begin that. <clears throat>
that love the Lord that is found in your bulletin or on your screen. Come we that love the Lord. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and And peace peace to his his people on earth. Lord Lord God, God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do. 
and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, the Padanaran, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, conceived. Children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. So they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So they named him Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore him. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff for I am famished. Therefore, he was called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. We will now read Psalm 119, responding by verse. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn in the earth to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commands. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh 
so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk are not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit of life and is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. 
But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately received it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of that word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus gets into a boat as great crowds of people gather. Listen, Jesus says, his voice projecting across the water into the crowds. A sower goes out to sow seeds. We know the parable well. Listen, Jesus begins. Join with me as we find ourselves in another group of people. The scene occurs in a courtroom, maybe 20 or 30 years ago. I am here, the lawyer hears a voice from behind him. I am here, the people of the crowded courtroom hear the same voice, projecting herself as passionately as she can. The elderly, finely dressed woman lets the court know that she is here. The attorney, Brian Stevenson, knows only her name, Mrs. Williams. A lone voice speaks to a cram courtroom and people hear her. Jesus' voice is heard by great crowds gathered around him as he sits in a boat. As he speaks, Jesus begins to paint a picture for his listeners. In the painting are rocks, thorns, hot sun, birds, paths, and dirt. The main items Jesus adds are seeds. Seeds for bearing in good soil. The picture is chaotic. Too much distraction. Harsh natural forces, sun, forms, birds feeding on a path, all ruining the chances for the seeds to grow. The painting is our worldview, is it not? Feeling as if all those potentially good things, the sun, the wind, the rocks, the birds, even the thorns seem to get in the way of what we're here to do, to sow seeds for new growth. Jesus paints the picture. Listen, he says, 
His parable reminds us of a refreshing point of view, of a new kingdom, a new way of thinking, believing, loving, living. The courtroom in Alabama, in the heart of a Jim Crow controlled system of justice, Attorney Brian Stevenson is there to present a case for Walter McMillan's innocence. Walter has been incarcerated on death row for six years. Walter had been set up for the conviction by a desperate white community and justice system, desperate for justice of an unsolved murder. Walter, a local black man, is an easy target for such a conviction. And too often, nobody challenges such a circumstance. In Stevenson's book, Just Mercy, he talks about the overwhelming number of black prisoners on death row. Many innocent, many others eligible for reduced sentences instead of charges of capital murder. Stevenson started the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, Alabama in 1989. After doing months of persistent research, Stevenson finally convinces a judge, a white judge, to hear the new evidence regarding Walter McMillan's conviction and his death sentence. In the courtroom, people arrived from all over Alabama, mostly black people. Some know Walter and some do not. And the courtroom is packed. Everyone is not able to even get into the courtroom. It's so crowded. The white defenders of the conviction and the white judge are intimidated. The scene is not unlike we find in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. It packed us in the same area in Alabama. But this scene with accused murderer Walter McMillan and attorney Brian Stevenson is not fiction. It is real. Jesus' parable is here the rocks on the path, the thorns, the harsh sun, the scavenging birds. Will this seed have a chance to grow? Will life, justice, mercy, and love win? Will a new kingdom of all? Listen, Jesus says. Attorney Brian Stevenson is given three days to make his case about Walter McMillan's innocence. He asks for at least a week and maybe 10 days the judge gives him three days. And the first day goes well, as Stevenson reflects, so well that the news ripples out into the communities around the courthouse. Walter's family, black communities, rural poor folk, as well as the black middle class, something unique is happening in this courtroom. Listen, Jesus says. On the second day, Stevenson says, out of the corner of my eye, I see Mrs. Williams has made it to the courtroom door. She's quite elegant in her hat and her scarf. She's not a large woman, but there is something commanding about her presence. As she approaches the metal de de detector, Mrs. Williams sees the dog, the dog brought to the courtroom that day by the white judge and the courtroom authorities. And Mrs. Williams begins to tremble and shake noticeably. Tears are running down her face. She turns around and quickly walks out. Following the hearing, Brian Stevenson looks for Mrs. Williams, and I'll read from the book. 
Mrs. Williams, I'm sorry that did happen this morning. They should not have done it. I'm sorry if they upset you, but so you know things went well today, I feel like it was a good day. Attorney Stevenson, I feel so bad. I feel so bad, she says, and she grabbed my hands. I should have come into that courtroom this morning. I was supposed to be in that courtroom this morning, she says, and she begins to weep. Mrs. Williams, it's all right, I said. They shouldn't have done what they did. Please don't worry about it. And I put my arm around her and give her a hug. No, 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 Attorney Stevenson. I was meant to be in that courtroom. I was supposed to be there. It's okay, Mrs. Williams, it's okay. No, sir, I was supposed to be there and I wanted to be there. I tried, Lord knows I tried. But when I saw that dog, she shook her head and stared away with a distant look. When I saw that dog, I thought about 1965, when we gathered at the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma and tried to march for voting rights. They beat us and put those dogs on us. She looked back at me sadly. I tried to move Attorney Stevenson. I wanted to move, but I just couldn't do it. As she spoke, it seemed like a world of sadness surrounded her. She let go of my hand and she walked away. Some of the seeds fall on the path. Birds come and eat them. Some seeds fall on rocky ground. Others fall around the thorns and they're smothered. On the third day of the hearing for Walter McMillan, once again, the courtroom is packed. As Mrs. Williams approaches the courtroom door, impeccably dressed in her scarf and hat, Stevenson says, I can hear her. Speaking to herself, I ain't scared of no dog. I ain't scared of no dog. And when Mrs. Williams sees the dog, she speaks so everyone can hear her. I ain't afraid of no dog. And when she gets to her seat, she belts out to Brian Stevenson. <clears throat> Attorney Stevenson, I'm here. Mrs. Williams, it's so good to see you. Thank you for coming. Stevenson says, and he goes back to his desk and starts working. And that's when I hear Mrs. Stevenson call my name. No, Attorney Stevenson, you didn't hear me. I said, I'm here. She spoke very loudly and I was a little confused and embarrassed. And I turned around and smiled at her. No, Mrs. Williams, I did hear you, and I'm glad you're here. When I looked at her, though, it was as if she was in her own world. The courtroom was packed, and the bailiff brought the court to order as the judge walked in. Everyone rose, as is the custom. When the judge took the bench and sat down, everyone else in the courtroom sat down as well. And there was a usual, an unusually long pause as we all waited for the judge to say something. I noticed people staring at something behind me. And that's when I turned around and saw that Mrs. Williams was standing. The courtroom got very quiet. <clears throat> all eyes were on her. I tried to gesture to her that she should sit down, but then she leaned her head back, and she shouted, I'm here. People chuckled. In that moment, I felt, I felt peculiar, a deep sense of, 
of recognition. I smiled now because I knew she was here in the room and she was saying, I may be old, I may be poor, I may be black, but I'm here. I'm here because I've got this vision of justice that compels me to be a witness. I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. I'm here because you can't keep me away. Other seeds fall on good soil, Jesus says. Bringing forth rain, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Let anyone with ears hear. Whenever Jesus speaks in parables, he is saying first, I'm here. And then he said, listen. The disciples are curious and they're confused. They think they know the tradition of God's role in creation, God's role in justice, in mercy, in love. They feel the chaos, the failed system around them. Some are unsure of his, of Jesus' authority. And then Jesus paints a picture, leading to truth. Mrs. Williams cuts through the clamor of rules and order in a flawed courtroom setting. Her voice, her presence, offers clarity, a new truth, a new hope, a new kingdom. Now, for those who have not read Stevenson's book, or seen the mercy movie, Just Mercy. <clears throat> You're probably wondering, well, did Walter get off? Was he freed? I'm not gonna tell you, you have to read the book. And if you're wondering if Jesus finished his painting in the kingdom of God for the Pharisees and for the disciples and the curious followers of Jesus, sorry, read the book, amen. Let us affirm our words now in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made. Of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord who gives our life. See, from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. The prayers of the people are form four found uh, on your program. Please unmute your mic at the appropriate time when we ask for your reflections. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, 
and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good and for the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord, and for those in positions of public trust, especially Donald, our president, Roy, our governor, and Ian, our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence to the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us and for our enemies and those who wish us harm and for all whom we have injured or offended. We pray to you, O Lord, and for ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Cheryl Dickey, Jan Scott, Chappie Moser, Lydia Serrano, Marcus Day, Mary Day, Cecilia Walker, Bob Walker, Bob Stewart, Linda Carter, Izzy Martin, Don Marlowe, Dean Daly, Mertis Alexander, Aubrey Henderson, Alan Gibby, Bev McCauley, Patricia Ratcliffe, Caroline Onsberger. And we offer our special prayers for our neighbors at the Newland School, children and their families, for Principal Conti, faculty and staff. Pray for the stability of their home lives and the safety of their loved ones, and for the Holy Comforter Newly Partnership and its many volunteers who stand by to serve the school in any way they can during these unsettling times. We give thanks for the continued recovery of, for Bob Stewart and Patricia Ratcliffe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Blaine Alice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things for the whole world which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us now unmute and greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace to all. Peace to all. Peace. Peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of God power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last say, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come Thy will be done, on and earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for you, who are also gifts of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray together, staying muted. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you there above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart, cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you and you life and a life to come. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and tomorrow and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hymn, um, hymn, closing hymn is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. 